outside. It's obviously been a while since we've seen you in the octagon, but even longer since we got to see you fight in this part of the world. So I guess physically, emotionally, how was camp, uh, even with the opponent change so close to the day? Um, yeah, great camp and super excited to be here in Australia. It's been a long time coming for me for this homecoming. Four years, I think, since I fought in Australia. So just super excited that I'm here. When they announced this card, did you think it was a no-brainer that they would put you on this? Because they have been to Australia since you came to your seat, but this, this part will never really got to see you fight here. Yeah, I think that as I was like building and growing and they had me in the Apex and the Australia cards kept happening, I was like, one day, one day. And then last year I got um, booked on Sydney, but something happened and I fell out. So I got booked on this card and I was super excited. Then I lost my opponent and I was like, oh my god, am I never going to fight in Australia in the UFC? So, a little stressful for a minute, but grateful that Luana took the fight and I'm still here. Luana, uh, like you mentioned, uh, she's on a bit of a run in the UFC and she's very popular now. So, is this even just a better case scenario, like a better, like a bigger named opponent and more, more eyes on you in here in Australia? Yeah, for sure. You know, she's got a lot of hype right now, 3-0 uh, in the UFC, I think. so. Um, it's exciting for me to be able to take that away on Sunday and you know I, I know what that feels like I've been there and done that so the confidence that she has um, I'm sure coming in she feels great so even better for me. Well it was kind of if you could expand on that like you were 3-0 in the UFC and you were like this name that everyone was fighting and now that's she's in that same exact position coming to your part of the world so what do you, what do you think she is feeling coming into this because yes it's a quick turnaround but she seems to be like you know the more popular fighter in this division right now. Yeah, she'll be feeling like pretty confident, I'm sure, you know, she just got a big finish and everything, so um, I'm sure that she's riding uh, a wave of positivity, but I feel good too, and she has to get in there and fight me at the end of the day, so we'll see what happens on Sunday. And then after your last performance, you posted something on Instagram that you just, during the fight, you just couldn't do what you were doing in camp, you said it was a good camp, you were doing your last fight, did you have to adjust anything just mentally coming into this so you don't feel like that again? Um, yeah, I started talking to a sports uh, psychiatrist as well after that last fight, but I'm not sure if that even had anything to do with it. I talked to a lot of uh, people who have been in the UFC for a long time, and they all say that some nights you just, you know, you don't show up, you can't expect to be on 365 days of the year, and, you know, you pick a date 10 weeks out, and you're like, I need to be ready on this day. Some days you're not, and, you know, you just got to learn to roll the punches. What is it like being in a UFC, you know, a high pressure UFC fight and you just your body is not reacting to what you want it to do? It's kind of weird, but uh, to be honest, like when you're in the cage, you kind of drown out all the noise. So it does just feel like something weird is happening. But I guess there's just a lot of people watching. And then once you do, like once everything's happened, the fight's <coughs> over and you're leaving, you're like, oh, wow, there was actually a lot of people here that just saw that happen. So. Two quick points for me, unrelated to this fight, but uh, November 1st, they're gonna implement those new rule changes with the 12 to six elbows and the new uh, definition of crowd point. I'm curious, did you hear about these rule changes? What do you make of the new rule changes? Yeah, I heard about them and I love them, especially the knee one. You know, I think people play that game too much where they try and put their fingertips down so that they can't get knees. So just gives us more opportunity to land damage um, in close and then the 12 to six elbows, obviously, that was famous with John Jones, so, um, yeah, it's great. And I'm sure I know your answer to this, but how do you see the main event between Israel and Jerikis playing out? Um, I'm obviously rooting for Israel being here in Australia. You know, I would like, love to see him get the win in front of a, like, relative home crowd and get that belt back. Thanks, just to know. Um, this is your first camp, uh, not an extreme couture in Las Vegas, I guess, all of the young full process behind that. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get a fresh set of eyes, I guess. You know, I think when nothing's broken, you don't fix anything. So just um, now that I had had a couple of losses or setbacks, just look back and evaluate myself and things that I could do differently and just get a couple of different opinions as well um, from people that I know are, have great fighters and that I trust. Is that something that will be a permanent move moving forward or just kind of playing it by ear? Yeah, I'm just kind of playing it by ear. I'm trying to really focus on myself now um, instead of focusing on certain opponents and stuff like that. So just getting myself to be the best that I can be. So whether that comes with a different move or going back or back and forth or whatever, we'll just see when, when it happens. Thank you.
basically here. Um, I'm sure you've heard this one before, but you, your uh, strikes landed per minute record is the highest in the UFC, 8.71. Um, is there, what do you just kind of attribute to that, like your, your high output, no one else who's had as many fights as you've had is even close to you, and that's just so. I just like to fight, and I like to hit and get hit. I know it's probably not great, um, but as you can tell in the Roxanne fight, the most fun that I'm having is sort of when it's a scrap like that. So, um, yeah, I guess I just like to throw down. Yeah, I'm sure it'll go down over time with the more fights, just on average. But um, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. I was gonna say, do you feel like that's something you will be able to maintain for a long time? Um, yeah, I pride myself on having like really good cardio. It's something that I make sure that I maintain year round, so I'm always ready to jump in. So I love having high cardio, high pace, I feel like it breaks a lot of people. So um, yeah, it's something that I definitely look to have my whole career. And uh, Casey, uh, you have obviously your Scottish roots, Scottish flag, training in America, but you do a lot of your time in Australia. Can you talk about how important fighting in front of Australians are and, and, and kind of getting your love from Australia? Yeah, so like my whole MMA career has been here in Australia pretty much. My whole amateur career was here. I started MMA here, put everything together here, and then had my first four professional fights here in Australia. So um, going to the live events before I was in the UFC, it was always my goal to be in the UFC one day and fight here in Australia. So very excited that it's here. And obviously the original promotion you came up in is on this weekend as well. Is it important to kind of go back to your roots to see where you came from to obviously the, the sort of star you've become now? Yeah, I've actually, I've been to a lot of Eternals since obviously. It is run by my dad and uh, my little sister fights as well. So I've been back to a few, I've done some commentary for them and stuff. So I'm starting to get like involved in more aspects of it. And it's super cool to see the growth of Australian MMA. Obviously this card is filled with um, Australians, a lot of them are people who came in at the same time or after me as well. So there is this new generation and then sort of seeing the people who are coming up next, um, especially the females for me, I like to follow that. So just seeing all of the regional <coughs> Australians who are doing well. Well, I mean, like, while you're on that, who is next? Uh, in terms of females? Yeah. I would say Jacinta Austin's probably the closest. She's been doing really well. I think maybe one or two wins away from getting in. Thank you. Basically, you had uh, you had one of the more interesting celebrations, I think, when you beat Antonina Shevchenko. How do you think your your celebrations compare to Reagan? And uh, are we are we gonna see another Sally after this weekend? You are actually. I was practicing it this morning when I was training, so I'm not gonna give it away though. You gotta wait and uh, see what my celebration is gonna be. And um, I know there's a bit of history there between you and Veronica Hardy. She's on a bit of a win streak now. Is that one you want to get in the future? Yeah, sure. I'd love to fight everybody in the division. You know, I think I've always said that. I think that as long as you can stay in the UFC and continue to do well, you'll end up fighting everybody. So, yeah. And sure, I guess it's kind of a little bit of a grudge match, maybe. This guy stole my question about Ray Gun. Thanks, mate. <laughs> But uh, I'll go on to uh, obviously a bit of history as well because this, your fight on Sunday was only the second uh, women's bout at UFC in Perth. But creating a little bit of history because you'll be the first Australian woman uh, to, to fight in Perth. What does that mean to you? Wow, that's awesome. I actually didn't know that. But uh, yeah, super cool. My last uh, regional win before I got signed to the UFC was actually here in Perth as well. So it's been something that I've sort of been looking at as a manifestation kind of or um, something I guess something along those lines but it was my best performance regionally so I'm looking to put my best performance here for Perth and get the crowd going and it'll be nice to have a crowd who's actually behind me this time because obviously in Houston I had that incident I guess but it's nice to have some Aussies around. Mitch already touched on it but obviously it's, uh, it's been built as Australia's biggest fight weekend because it's all Obviously, not only a massive uh, weekend for you, but a massive weekend for your family. Obviously, uh, Eternal 87 on, on Saturday night uh, with the prolific Cam O'Neill, and obviously, you'll see your Robin O'Neill over there as well. So, a huge weekend for your family, and what what we mean to, to, to cap it off with a, the, with a victory on, the, on Sunday and a bit of break dancing uh, in Ray Gun style. Um, yeah, it'll be awesome. So my dad's done super well on building Australian MMA. You know, obviously he's not done it alone, but he's been 
um, a big part of building Australian MMA regionally here. So pray to him and I hope to make him proud on Sunday too. Okay, so just down here talking about Cam, uh, when was the last time he saw you fight? He comes to pretty much every one of my fights now, yeah. So he'll trap you with you with the UFC? Yeah, he has, yeah. He was in uh, Vegas in December, he was in London when I fought there as well, so he just comes to as many as he can. Is there any other family who will get a chance to see you now that it's back in Australia? Uh, yeah, my mom's flying in from the Goldie and my sister's here obviously, and then a bunch of friends from the Goldie are coming down as well. How is that for you when you've got kind of friends and family around you but you've got to focus on the task at hand? Um, it's alright. I actually experienced it kind of in London. My family who live in Scotland came down for that one, so I've got some practice of it now and I like to just like let them be and see them after the fight. Awesome, thank you very much. Thank you. Any more guys? Good? Thank you.